Hello and welcome to the Inside Stylist podcast. I'm Emma Morton Turner and you're listening to episode 11. Creativity knows no bounds with interior stylist and designer Abigail Edwards. Today's guest has worked for a number of clients. She's a stylist and she has worked for IKEA, Primark, The White Company, The Linen Works, TK Maxx. I mean, that's just a few companies. If I start on the magazines, Living Etc., Sunday Times, Style Mag, Coast, You, Grazia, House and Garden. I'm, I could just go on, but I'm just going to stop there. Otherwise, we will have no time to talk. Today's guest is Abigail Edwards. Hello, Abigail. Hello. Thank you for I, having me. I can't call you Abigail. I have to call you Abby. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so thank you very much for letting me come to your house. Thank you for coming. <laughs> um, it's beautiful. Your house is stunning. I did do a little Google search yesterday to check that I wasn't going to ask you questions that anyone could get anywhere else. <laughs> and your house popped up everywhere. So I was like, I knew what I was coming to. But actually, it's everywhere. It always looks better in, in real life, doesn't That's it? That's very kind of you. <laughs> um, so we met when we worked on a magazine, which um, I worked out recently. It was quite a long time ago. I'm not going to say how many years because it's way too many. But um, you were a, an established stylist. And I was the, I had my very first job on Homes and Ideas, and you were already a stylist then. Do I you think, remember? Yes, I think I was, I'd be, I'd come from Country Homes and Interiors, and I think I was assisting and doing the odd little shoot there, but I'd been there sort of freelance full time for about a year, and I'd just started doing freelance jobs when I came to. What, homes and Ideas? Homes and Ideas. I know, do you, I always have to remember not to say ideal home <laughs> it was a world away from that wasn't it but I can't remember how long I was there I think it was maybe like six months well I was there for a year and a half and it closed at the end of that year and a half and you weren't there when I got there so probably you weren't you started I long after me I was freelance the whole time but I was just there a long time yeah you were you had your own desk and which stuff is the under same it as the country homes before that I hadn't actually got a job I was just there yeah that, there's quite a lot that going yeah. on isn't there yeah so um you, so you were a stylist, but did you do something creative? When you Did you study something creative? I studied fine art, and that was the plan. I thought I was going to be an artist. Wow. You, <laughs> we're coming to this in a minute, but you kind of are, aren't you? <laughs> well, I, in, a, in a way, in a commercial way now. But yeah, I thought I was going to be in a little studio painting all the time. Um, but yeah, then after art school, I went to New York and was assisting in art galleries for a while. Wow. And... Um, and it was whilst I was there because I had a British accent they put me on the reception desk all the time <laughs> and I had pretty much nothing to do apart from look through magazines many of which were interiors magazines so I saw these beautiful shots at the moment I didn't know what styling was really but I thought it was something that I wanted to do so initially I applied for jobs on the art desk thinking yes. oh I did exactly the same thing that's so interesting because <laughs> I didn't I didn't really know the word stylist yeah apart from hairdressing obviously. yeah or um, fashion yeah so exactly. everyone thinks you're a fashion stylist yeah. when you say you're a stylist so then when I got replied back from the art desk at the magazine saying that was wrong <laughs> then I started applying to be an intern with the decorating department and yeah I did that for a while in America or here? no I came back to London I was at the time I was in a relationship with someone who had no interest in living in New York so I came back to London for that very cool so you you interned and then kind yep. of how did you get your so did you work on you were free did you go straight into freelance no it was weird I was very lucky I don't think it would happen now um I did internships I think but uh, Really nice, actually. I really enjoyed them all. World of Interiors, House and Garden, Homes and Gardens, then Country Homes. And then Country Homes just needed someone, so yeah. I just stayed on. Then I stayed on and on and on. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And then I sort of had a job. Yeah. And did you leave there because you felt you wanted to experience other magazines? No, I left because um, the editor changed and they realised that they shouldn't have actually been employing me <laughs> that, that long time. <laughs> without um, me having an official Contracts, job. So yeah. then I left, and that was when I went to Homes and Ideas. Then um, then I left there, did a few freelance jobs, and then Country Homes asked me back um, to be deputy decorating editor but just two days a week, which was absolutely perfect yeah. for me because it meant I could carry on with my freelance work 
and um, have a bit of security. Yeah. Did you have an idea of what you wanted to shoot in, like when? Because if you've got like a permanent two day a week job, you know you've got yeah. X amount of money coming yeah. in every month. Did you think right? What I really want to do is a. Because did you did you do a shoot for Osborne and Little? Yes. I remember really early on you did this amazing yeah, that fabric was, shoot. That was really lucky because I think I think I'd done a couple of shoots for the Guardian. Then I got that Osborne and Little shoot, which. They must have just been really desperate because I was really no, not experienced that. That at all. That was stunning. That's it. You just got talent and you knew what you wanted to do. And if you can kind of art direct an image from your head, then that's I what they're buying into, isn't I it? I really cared as well. I really, I just really wanted to make beautiful shots. Mm. And my tastes were probably a bit simpler than country home. I yeah. loved working country homes, but it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily you. my style, yeah. which I, I think they realised as well. Um, so in my freelance work I was doing much more contemporary stuff but it was nice having that balance and yeah. it also meant I when I left Country Homes which is probably about I think I was there about it might have even been 10 years I'm not sure really? gosh I've never had, had no idea it was that long it might have not been that long it, it might does have been, fly by doesn't it I was at Woman Home 11 years and it felt like 2 minutes it might have been 8 I don't know it was a long time yeah. anyway but only 2 but days a week but on 2 week. days a week so it's kind of like it's almost like you were there but you weren't there yeah. you were everywhere well and I think it, it probably there was too much work to do in 2 days a week so I'd always get in early sort of work through lunch and I think probably for them it wasn't great they probably would have rather had someone because the editors I think there were 3 editors wow. in that time yeah including the first bit, yeah. um, probably would have rather had someone who was there properly. Yeah. Did they ask you to be full-time? Yes. But it didn't work in at one favor. point, I, when they did, I already had lots of regular freelance clients. Mm. And so, and I think when they asked me, that was when I realised that actually I should just go. It's time to, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's time to cut Because this. you don't want, you know, you want to be useful where you're working. Yeah. And, um, and enjoy it. Yeah, and, and actually, it, if you don't feel it was a bit of a security blanket. Yeah. Like I, I liked everyone there. I, you know, I knew what I was supposed to be doing. I did the same shoot every month, so it was it was easy and it was mm. fun. And I, I did really care about the shoots, but I don't think it was possibly that helpful for my career to stay on there or for them as a magazine. Yeah. So then I went properly freelance and actually. Did you did you look back and think why didn't I do it? Yeah, sooner? totally, yeah. <laughs> totally. Because I was busy from day one, yeah, and I loved it. I loved working in different places all the time. And then I got an agent quite quickly, which didn't work out. Um, how long how long did you have the agent for? The first one. Oh dear, the first one. Yeah, <laughs> first one I was with for about I can't actually even remember. She was very new and she was a lovely person. But she just didn't get me any work. Yeah, which kind of defeats the idea. Yeah, exactly, somewhat. exactly. Um, and I can't remember if I was giving her twenty percent of my other clients or not. <gasps> I prob- possibly wasn't. I can't remember. Mm. But I just that that sort of petered out. And then I just thought, well, I don't want another agent. And then Era Management approached me, who were working with Penny Winter, who yeah. I was working with a lot at the time, and. Um, they were just so enthusiastic and helpful and I found the meeting I had them with them quite inspiring. So even mm. though I sort of had decided I didn't want an agent, I could just see that they would help me and they really did to begin with. They pushed me because at the moment I was doing sort of commercial work and, sorry, editorial yeah. mostly, not commercial apart from magazines like Being Who used to do a... I don't know. It was it was like, like showcasing their wallpapers exactly. or something like that. So it yeah. was sort of editorial style for yeah. a company. Whereas, um, whereas, <laughs> <laughs> we're just laughing because um, Abby's got this gorgeous um, whippet called Claude, and he's got up and he's covered in a blanket. He's got, he's wearing like a Superman <laughs> oh, cape. He's so cute. <laughs> um, so, yeah, basically, Era got me into the commercial side of things and introduced me to loads of new photographers. And so then I was... It just, it just became more professional mm. and they earned me more money, basically. And it was really nice having that backup as well. Someone who was organising stuff for you mm. and you didn't have to think about contacting people because they were doing it all for yeah. you. So 
If you um, you don't have an agent, <laughs> you don't have an agent now, do you? No, but I was with them for a long time. Mm. I think I only left them in October. Oh, really? Recently. Um, so I was with them for about ten years, and I mm. I really liked them, and I didn't really want to leave. But when I started my other business, I was doing less styling, and I felt this pressure to say yes it's, to all the jobs, yeah. which they didn't put on me at all. That was completely Yeah, you don't me. like saying no to people. You don't say no. And also, yeah. quite often it's a job and you think, oh, that would be brilliant. I really yeah, exactly. want to do that. Exactly. But I shouldn't because I need to concentrate on my new business. Yeah. yeah, and also I was getting really burnt out, like styling all the time and sort of running my business before and after shoots and at weekends. And I was just, I spent a lot of time just being really quite ill that sounds, and, not um, a little bit but I do understand the rest of it I'm just having no personal life yeah whatsoever. I was going to say not having a life yeah. yeah and so I just felt like it was time to prioritise other things mm. slightly especially because it, you know my other businesses started earning more than the styling and it yeah. just sort of it just made sense to step back a bit but I felt really sad I think I cried yeah. actually oh, I'm sure. Sure. it's I was the end going. of an era isn't yeah, it yeah and I felt like I, I was sort of betraying them by going but um but actually yeah since then things have been a bit more manageable yeah um you're the first stylist that I've had on the podcast that's had an agent so um can you just talk a little about how it works so I think from what I know they deal with all the paperwork yeah. All the horrible invoicing and receipts and that sort of thing. I still, I would, um, I had a genius scan on my phone, so I would scan all my receipts and send them to them, mm. and I would add them up, sometimes oh, wrong. Oh, very good. I would <laughs> add them up. Um, just because I felt it was a bit rude to expect them to look through all these scrappy yeah. photos. Um, and then, yeah, they'd do everything else. Yeah, and then they would just send you the money at the end of the month sort of thing. Um, or, you know, within... The, the within, whatever deadline, whatever, within, yeah, exactly. 30 day terms or whatever it is. Yeah, it wasn't never 30, 30 day. days, never 30 days. It was days. a few months, really. Yeah, gosh, mm. but you were working so it kind of became regular Bec- enough. Yeah, it didn't really. I think if you because they, they'd pay like twice a month, and so I think agents do tend to hang on to money mm-hmm. a little bit bit longer I think that's just a general mm, thing let's just um, that interest totting up I might mm-hmm. <laughs> I might be wrong yes but, um, I don't think so I think you're probably not wrong but too. um it didn't bother me because I was working so much at the after that initial phase yeah you've got money continually it's coming in, in anyway yeah. so it doesn't matter as long yeah. as long as it's regular I don't mind if it's a few months late yeah, yeah that's it and they got you lots of work which is exactly really good. Yeah. yeah but towards the end it was more just repeat bookings of yeah, people who've enjoyed working with you. And who I really like working yeah, with. Yeah, that's so, what it's about, isn't it? It's all about the relationships and, so, you and know, people the, you want to hang out with. Exactly, and because I wasn't desperate for new clients and to have loads of work, it just didn't make sense to have an mm. agent anymore. It was easier to just stick with the people I like working yeah. with and keep going. I, um, I always ask stylists about disasters from shoots or just generally working, and everybody laughs just like that. <laughs> Because um, I don't ever ask, have you ever had a, a disaster? I always ask, can you tell me about a disaster? I would say, I mean, there are I would say many, <laughs> many disasters that, but I, I'd like to think of them as... Learning? Learning, <laughs> yeah. Would you like to share one of your learnings um, with us? <laughs> to begin with, I... This was pretty much every shoot. I just was... I cared so much to the point of being a massive control freak and I would have arguments with the art directors regularly because I just didn't agree with them and I thought it was my job to to express that mm. and um, sometimes they were big arguments I can't imagine you arguing you're, I very, guess, you're very genteel and quiet but when and I'm passionate, passionate about something yeah. and if I think someone's about to ruin it yes then you stand your ground I do to I the love point, that. but but to the point that was actually really unprofessional, right. which I didn't realise at the time. But that was early on, and you learnt. That was early that. on. Well, I only they kept on employing me, so I don't think they minded that much. <laughs> yes, I think sometimes it's good to challenge it because it's all um, this is what I see, and you see something completely different. And it's yeah. not that it's wrong; it's just that you you had something else in mind. So it's kind of like, but there's 
we're arguing about something that isn't a right or a wrong. Exactly. So actually, I can see why that's a valuable point. I'm, sh- I'm I wouldn't do that now, and also, why well, I've learnt my place now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, at the time, I just didn't realise that wasn't what you did. But that wasn't really a disaster. That was just not very a big learning. Curve. Yeah, yeah. But then since then, I would say two that were more disasters. I did a shoot for a client in Mykonos and. It was, um, I was art directing and styling and there was a, there was a picture on the mood board that the client had sent and it was, it was this amazing bathroom and we just couldn't, we were location scouting when we arrived on the island and we just couldn't find a bathroom that matched the beauty of this mm. one. And then the producer who was there suddenly said, oh, I know that bathroom and it was on a different island. So me and the producer decided that it was worth us getting a boat and putting, <laughs> putting all and your going, props in a boat no, luckily just the props to... went on a different boat we had like a little dinghy oh, thing dear. and going across to this island for a day um so there were i think there were two shoot assistants my assistant the producer me photographer and photographer's assistant and um, in a it, little in a little no, it was a, it was like a big dinghy. Okay. And um, but it turned out the day was supposed to go. The weather was really bad, and actually, it was dangerous. Um, yeah. We shouldn't have gone. But you know when you're shooting, but you, you just, did. You but just you have went. to. <laughs> and um, so on the way, um, I get I'm not great on boats oh. anyway. I get quite travel sick and I get claustrophobic. And I have panic attacks. Oh my God. And um, so on the way, the waves, I was at the back of this dinghy and, and the waves were just kind of smashing in my face to the point where it, it actually physically hurt. And I thought, I just thought we were going to die. It was that rough. Yeah. It was horrible. And um, and I passed out. <gasps> then, then, then as we kind of got to, every, no one was having fun. It wasn't like I was being, do you mind him No, he's that? fine. Hi, Claude. Um... <laughs> As as we got there, it was it was fine. But then I kind of had a panic attack, started crying. Of course you <laughs> did. <laughs> and um, I got out of the boat and couldn't really walk. Then that was fine. I kind of got around. Then the producer fainted. <laughs> they had to call. <laughs> they called an ambulance. <gasps> then, but then it was fine. We got to the house. There was this amazing infinity pool. The sun was really hot, and we just jumped in and swam, and everything seemed okay. Yeah. Later on in the day, I suddenly was sick because I'd swallowed a load of seawater. <laughs> and then oh basically, God. at the end of this shoot, which went really Wait, did, well... Was the bathroom okay when you got there? Yeah, it was beautiful. Okay. I thought it, you were saying, really, the bathroom was wrong. <laughs> no, we had a really good shoot. Then we went back, and we and literally the same happened on the way back. Mm. So that was, again, it was like being a bit too desperate to get this amazing yeah. shot. But actually, it was unsafe and we shouldn't have gone. Yeah. Um, but ultimately it didn't matter you know no one died although but actually on but the you way thought back, you were going to on the way back the photographer got because um, the waves were so big she was holding onto this rope to kind of so to stay on yeah. the boat and she kind of swung up into the air and got slammed on on the floor and my assistant ankle got really bruised so it wasn't <gasps> really dangerous yeah it was just a bit extreme yeah okay I just so you know you've won in the disaster <laughs> shoot, okay. You're 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 currently in the lead. <laughs> that sounds horrific. Was, the thing is, the shoot, the actual shoot went well, and I'd say the the most recent disaster was more of a learning curve. It was a job. I got the job and I didn't really want it. The client, it it wasn't an interiors one. It was something else. It was an advertising. It was, um, yeah, it just wasn't an interiors mm. one. But it was sh- shot within interiors, so I said yes. And I got to the meeting and where I was supposed to be briefed and I got pushed into a conference call with the client who was in Geneva or somewhere. Yeah. And um, and they, the, the design agency had told the client that I'd already been briefed. Oh, and so they were so asking me loads of questions. Didn't know and I, what was going on. I, didn't, I had no idea what the shoot was. And at that point, after that meeting, I should have just said no. Mm. But they were really nice, so I said yes, and it was like those communication problems just carried on. Yeah, that's kind of the sign of how it's going to yeah. go from then. And, and I and, and I should have my gut feeling at mm. each stage was just say no, walk out, and I didn't. And that shoot was so horrible. 
it made me want to give up styling. <gasps> wow. So that, I think that's my biggest learning curve. If you get the gut feeling yeah. to say no, that this client's wrong or yeah, you something's know, really disorganised. You know something's really not right. It was just, yeah. they, like I had calls from the set builder at two in the morning because the producer hadn't told them where they were going the next day. Mm. It was just, everything about it was awful. Not repeat clients then. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and also it made me want to only work with interiors clients. Yeah. So now that's what I do. Yeah. I don't work. Well, I, actually, that's not true. But I think sometimes you know that um, if someone really knows what they're doing and they can explain it all and it, 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 you can tell when it's going to work. But when yeah. it's not going to work, it's like cut your losses. Yeah, um, and if you just feel like there's something wrong with the people you're dealing with, mm. just, just walk away. <laughs> What, let's let's go on to more positive notes. Yeah, then. yeah what, sorry, that was a what, bit depressing. No, that's fine. It's, you've done a lot of shoots. You've probably seen <laughs> a whole lot more. Um, what's been the best job you've ever done? What's your favourite thing to shoot? I do a lot of work for IKEA, and quite a lot of the people we, whose houses we go to are in really interesting places. Abroad? Yeah, and yeah. quite often weird places, not, you know, yeah. not just Random. going to cities. They're sort of, you go to the countryside in Poland or... Um, like a little town in northern Sweden or something. Yeah. Do you and like travelling for work? I love travelling for work. really love it. And I love meeting super inspiring yes. people. So I really like those. And then also the, the job with the boat. It was stressful, but it was lovely, kind of shooting in these beautiful locations in the sunshine mm. um, with, you know, really nice product. Yeah. So... I think, yeah, my favourite is probably the ones where you're travelling in amazing locations. I'll tell you one of the shoots. I was looking at your website last night, doing some research, and there was a shot, and I was just like, how did you do that? I think it was a TK Maxx shoot, and it was in, a, like, a forest, and it was night time, but you had all these lampshades hanging down. Oh, yeah. And all the lampshades were lit, but they were so high. Like, that, how did that you was, do that? Um, that was Mel Yates shot, that one. Oh. That was quite tricky yeah <laughs> because like when I say high I mean these trees were probably it must have been like 50 foot high they, you couldn't see the top obviously I think that was quite a while ago I think we had um we had a couple of set builders and we had scaffolding up to hang oh. the lights there were quite a few generators and um it started off as a dusk shot but then it just took yeah. a while so oh, it, it ended up being right? basically night time yeah it's, it's amazing i'll um i'll link to it it's on abby's um styling website which is abigail edwards styling.com um it's it's a spectacular shot i was like oh my god look at that and you've done that and you've done that and, and the primark shoot where you've got like a bed is that primark a high bed and there's like a ladder against the wall that looked really cool like shooting um, primark yeah. is really interesting because it's kind of you need to make uh, an inexpensive item look premium. Yeah, and um, that's that, they're quite a new client, and I really like working with them. Um, Emily Henson is art directing, yes. and she's a friend, so it's really nice working with her. Um, but that one, James Askham, set builder, built this bed based on a picture I drew, and it was in oh, the location in Deptford. I can't remember what it's called. But yeah, it was really nice, because you have... You have the product, which is usually quite fashionable, mm. but um, we just shoot it within an amazing setting yeah. so that you're getting the kind of character and atmosphere of the room rather than being super close on the product. Yeah, so and showing them, showing the customer how it can be styled exactly. in another way than just regular, yes. like, yes. regular houses. Well. That was a back-to-college shoot, so it was all about kind of making... <laughs> student living a bit cooler yeah. oh it was very cool <laughs> um right i know i don't want to keep you all day but we do have to talk about some other elements i'd yeah. like to touch on your wallpapers yes so i can't remember i obviously i've known you for quite a long time i can't remember when you started your wallpapers but it's it's grown hasn't it I, You've got... I actually launched the company in 2011 but i started drawing the first two designs um i think in about 2009 and it was it wasn't really planned as a business. I, I'd, after art school, I'd carried on just doing little pen and ink illustrations, yeah. really. And one of them just seemed like it would work as a pattern. So I tried it out, and I guess because I was doing interiors, it seemed quite natural to put it on a product. Yeah. So I put it on wallpaper. I don't 
generally in a why you um just to explain to anyone who hasn't seen your wallpapers where have you been um Abby hand draws all your wallpapers, don't you? They're yeah. all like line drawn and they're very intricate and very kind of, is it bramble web? And they're all kind of twisted. They're all sort of based and around nature and, and fairy, fairy tales. tales. Yeah. yeah, nature, yeah. Um, but they're, they're very intricate. Like the feathers one is very yeah. detailed and the seascapes, like waves of Cornwall, wasn't it? Or, yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like beautifully drawn. And so they're, they're printed very traditionally um, on rollers in Lancashire. So it's supposed yeah. to keep that sort of hand drawn yeah. quality. Um, so how many designs have you got now? I don't know. Um, I only I only have like one or two new ones a year. Does it take a long time to kind of from start to production? Yes. I mean, the first two took me the longest. They, yes. I worked on those for yes. over a year each, on and off, obviously. Mm. <laughs> um, and then some I'll do in a few months. But quite often the the sort of basis for the idea will come a couple of years before the actual mm. wallpaper. So I'm not necessarily with a plan for it to be a wallpaper, just, you know, a sketch or yeah. something. And then you work on it. And yeah. Because um, we were just up in your studio, up in your loft, and you showed me your design area and um, where you've got layers of drawings that have been um, kind of worked on over time. And yeah. And taking elements out and maybe adding elements and yeah. the colours right and all of that sort of Cause thing. Because also I'm very bad with technology. I can't use Photoshop. So I can't use Photoshop. <laughs> we haven't needed to. No. We're not in the art department. Well, that's the thing, but now I'm a designer, I should be able to use it. But you do it all by hand. I do. And that's partly why, because yes. I'm so rubbish with technology. Um, so that's why I, I'll draw something and then I'll just draw it again until it's right, yeah. rather than adjusting it. So this is what I was thinking the other day. How do you get the repeat? Do you draw a section and then you literally they can reproduce it on like how you do, have to, do you have to design it with the repeat yeah. in mind so i do it um i do it and then i used to measure it yeah and then i would try and match Replicate that measurement it. which obviously didn't work very well um so now i do it on graph paper which still doesn't match to the pixel no. but then i once i've done it so i have worked out the repeat and how it will join together someone much cleverer than me, yeah. then... Magic's it. Yeah, exactly. So that it's pixel perfect rather than a few millimetres yeah. off. Because as soon as it's on the wall, it's really obvious. Yeah, I'm sure. And then, um, so you've got fabrics and wallpapers. Yes. And you do um, cushions yes. and pots. I'm just looking in your... Yes. We're, in, we're in your kitchen dining room The now. pots, actually, they're a collaboration with Rebecca Hernandez, who used to assist me. Oh, fantastic. Um, she's... So she styles sort of sets and still life for... For fashion shoots, right? But she's um, set up Mux Ceramics in her spare time. Fantastic! So mm. creative people need extra outlets all the yes, time. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, so I'm sorry, I'm briefly talking about wallpaper because I don't want to keep you too long. And there's a rather large thing we need to talk about, and that is your book. Oh yes. So, oh yes. yes. I forgot about that little thing. <laughs> the book's new. Um, so. Um, I was very lucky to come to your book launch, which was just last week. The book is brand new. It's called um, Quiet Pattern, and it's by Clearview. And um, it's really beautiful. Obviously, Thank I'm still here, so it's like telling my child they're beautiful. <laughs> um, it is really beautiful. But what I think um, I found from the book is that it's very much like you. You're very um, gentle and very <laughs> calming. And the book is very, when you read it, it's a very calming, natural read. And it's really lovely. I, and I wanted that kind of calmness because I used to hate pattern a lot. And some, some I still do, lots of patterns I don't like. Um, but I wanted people who think like that or who are afraid of pattern to mm. see that it can be just... Um, really inspiring and calm and make a space feel more relaxing than just a plain wall it can make it a bit friendlier and ground the space and give it a focus and but also I wanted I didn't want to just talk about pattern in general I wanted to talk about the designers who yes. work with it so that it's relevant for people who want to get in design but also to have that sense of community because as when I'm styling I love working as a team that that's one of the nicest things mm. I think that you're all working together and suddenly job's done and you've created this beautiful yes. thing together but when you're working on your own it can be a bit isolating and you don't 
well, I don't have a clue how anyone else works. So it was really interesting to talk to the other designers and learn about their working process and their inspiration and that kind of thing. That was quite an important element for me. Yeah, in the book you kind of introduce it and there's your your wallpapers and and fabrics and things all the way through, um, which kind of sets the tone for that kind of nice calmness. Yeah. And then you talk about the history of pattern and some um, artists throughout time and show different elements and different ways of pattern being used. And then you interviewed um, a number of these artists who do pattern. Um, And they're all around the world. Did you go and visit everybody? Um, no, I wanted to. I'm sure. Um, I would have liked to have come with you. And I actually assumed <laughs> I would be. Sweden and America. And... Because, I, because other people I know who've done interiors books have just mm. flown out and shot everything. And because with Alan Callender, who shot the book, we started our careers around the same time and we started off doing house stories in Sweden. Yes. And, well, actually, all around Scandinavia would go off for like a week or ten days and just shoot as many houses as we could. So I just assumed we would be doing that. So I had to fight a little bit to... Mm shoot as much as we could but I wasn't allowed to shoot any of the American ones no. so um, there yeah Alan has shot all of them and we, we went to Sweden and Germany actually he didn't shoot um, Emma von Brumpson's house because she wasn't there at the time but everything else yes, we shot yeah. just the American ones and you can see there's a slightly different style yeah. of photography I will look for that <laughs> yeah. so how long did it take Actually, tell me how did it how did it get started? Did you come up with an idea and put it to a publisher? I just I had I had an idea um, that I thought was relevant now mm. um, because everyone's into this sort of very calm way of living and wellness and not being yeah. stressed and all that. So yeah. I thought it was relevant now. So I knew I had to not sit on it for too long. And then, but it took me a while to get it into something that I could show a publisher. Did you put a book proposal together? And yes. Yeah. And, um, and I approached two publishers. One was Clearview and um, another one. Luckily, Clearview said yes. Mm. And after they'd said yes, I'd got a response from the other one saying, saying no. no. <laughs> yeah. uh, things but, are meant to happen. But I didn't they? mind because no, I already... You were already there. Yeah. <laughs> And um, Clearview are a very tiny company run by two women, which I really yeah, like that. that. Um, and luckily they said yes. And a Catherine um, publisher came to my house and I could just tell she got the idea totally. Mm. And so then we started. And that was actually quite... Because I hadn't written a book before. I didn't no. know how it worked. Mm. I hadn't written for ages. We used to write house stories. Yes. So that was scary. Um yeah, and, then and I read in the back you got your mum to read everything. Yes, I, I do. would have done that. She's yeah. really good at grammar. My mum's really good. <laughs> at grammar. <I'm> down. <laughs> um, yeah, um, but it was it was a, a learning curve again. Mm. Just publishers work in a very different way. I assumed it would be more like, like writing magazine. for a magazine, yeah, where you know everything happens quickly and yeah. you get a response quickly. You're expected to do it quickly, and you have deadlines. And but it was it was. Um, much vaguer which I actually found it quite stressful mm. initially they just didn't let me know what was happening so I assumed they'd dropped me so I just stopped oh, no. working on the book <laughs> and then they were like right we need 20 more pages yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah that's just that's just how they work mm. and I wasn't used to that so how long did it take then um because quite a lot of shooting involved yeah the the re it was more the researching and the kind of thinking about the structure I think yeah. that that took a long time um but actually I think my first meeting with Catherine was April last year oh, wow and it was launched April this year yeah. so that, that process in a way is quite quick yeah that sounds quite quick to me but I'd been working on it myself for maybe a year before that right yeah but then also I was fully booked for shoots mm. um for styling so it was squashed in around that so I took two months off to do the writing and the shoots, I think, were done over probably a month, but, you know, the odd day here and there, yeah. depending Squeezing on when Alan was free and when I was yeah, free. that's it. Mm. Side hustles have to be squeezed exactly, in, Exactly, they, they yeah. do. There was a period where I think I didn't have a day off for 60 days. Oh, my God. Because of the book, the wallpaper business, and the shoots. Yeah. And then, at the end of it, I was just really ill. Yeah. I was like, I need a holiday in the Bahamas yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Which didn't happen. No. But, yeah. <laughs> um, and... What was the best bit of the book for you then? I think it was... Was it the book launch where we got to drink? Uh, the book launch was fun because then <laughs> the work really was done. Fun. Yeah. Um, 
I I found it really inspiring researching the historical section. Mm. It was a bit like being back at school and just really, you know, getting your yeah. teeth into something. Yeah. But I also really enjoyed talking to the other designers and the Skype calls to some of the American designers. It was, it was just really interesting to hear about how differently everyone runs their business. Mm. And yeah, they were just all really lovely and really interesting. Yeah, I suppose it's like a little world where you're all in that same yeah. pattern designing world. And yeah. You have like, you get inspired by each other. It's a... In, yeah, I think just, I find it inspiring meeting anyone who's just passionate about what they're doing yeah. and is managing to turn it into a business. And that sort of drive and focus I find really inspiring. Yeah, yeah me so, too. So, um, yeah, I, I wanted it to be like a, a little community sort of. Yeah, yeah bit. you've so definitely got that. Hopefully I will actually get to meet them at some point. But it was really lovely meeting the, the Swedish and German ones and the English ones I knew already that mm. I met through trade shows. Yeah, because that was something else you mentioned um, before we started recording, is that you go to trade shows. Yes. Um, when you are showing your um, your wallpapers and yes. fabrics and, and all the other um, accessories that you do. So you just literally set up on a stand and then yeah. you're talking to all the people who are in that same creative yes, selling their which product is, world. Yes, which is really nice. Mm. And um, styling's good for that as well, because I sort of picture the stand like a shot. Mm. So, I mean, they're getting more... Um, simple now but to begin with I was making little room sets where I had wallpaper chairs and table and had a wallpaper lamp mm. and everything um but yeah they're they're great because you get to actually meet your customers and um find out what people like and what they don't like yeah and you also get to meet all the other designers so I've got one in New York in a couple of weeks which is what this there's, a, box there's a giant is box sitting next to us that you could pretty much we could probably sit in yeah, together this could. box and it's got lots of goodies in that I've been hearing <laughs> but they're new and I'm not going to share um, what's next is probably New York yes. trade show and I've got um, yes yeah, so I'm doing you've got a new collection haven't you I've got in New York I'm launching some new rugs um, which are seascape design and mm, then lovely later on in the year I'm launching new cushions and new um, wallpaper design very exciting very exciting you've got lots now and hopefully the styling will carry on throughout that yes I'm sure it will <laughs> I'm sure it will there will be no time for anything <laughs> um, if anyone wants to see your wallpapers or your um, your collections they're at abigailedwards.com yes. I'm just going to share this now so people know where to find you and on Instagram you're at Abigail J. Edwards. Yeah. I want to ask you what the J is, but I'll, maybe I'll do that later. Um, <laughs> and um, also, uh, Jackie Hoyt is your PR. So yes. if any stylists want to feature any of your products or get any more information for features and um, products and things, I assume they just get in touch with Jackie. Yes, that would yeah. be brilliant. I will put all these, show, all these notes, all these details in the show notes so everyone can... Um, find you and access you and look at all your beautiful shops. <laughs> thank you. Abby, thank you so much for all this time and a lovely cup of tea and let me cuddle Claude. <laughs> it's thank been you great. very much for coming. It's really fun Brilliant. to talk to you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Inside Stylist podcast. You'll find all the links from today's episode, including links to the shoots we were talking about in the show notes at insidestylist.com forward slash Abigail Edwards. So, you know we love talking interiors, but we want to make sure that we're talking to the people you want to hear from. So if there's someone you think we should absolutely have on the show, please drop us a line. We would love to hear who you want to hear from. You can email us at hello at insidestylist.com or comment on the show notes over on the podcast tab on insidestylist.com. Bye for now.